Milos here. I mean, Intel is the name of the game, but a good point being brought up as well. The Brava, of course, can be a problem. So I'm very curious to see the operator bands once we get inside a border from these two teams. The, the teams had a bit of a break now with the uh, slight delay. We see the liquid favor growing ever so slightly through the course of the series, which makes sense given how Chalet went. But yeah, Face Clan now had time to settle them down, talk things through, kind of hit that reset button. But also, with how much time that had occurred between map number one and map number two, Liquid with the Admiral Adrenaline going through them, really being hyped up. They've had to calm down now as well. Too much time has passed. Arbiter Band's underway. Looking at what the Soul is, the Dark. Looking at the, of course, the Warden Band like we saw last time, a Ying. Yang will start things off, wasn't available in map number one and will not be available in map number two either. Seeing as this is FaZe's map, Liquid choose the starting side and surprise, surprise, actually starts, uh, chose to start on the defensive side of border. Dolkabi, target banned by FaZe, it was utilized by Liquid quite a lot on the previous map of Chalet. Not a bad choice at all, there it is, whoa, whoa. Information, so important, <laughs> also taken away. So big question now, Solus target ban from Liquid, yay or nay? No! Hey. Oh my! Hey. Instead, I would All have right. not guessed that one. Okay. We have a different border approach here. A lot of key operators are available, both the Solus as well as the Asami, the Munti, the Osa. You have a couple of different key operators to play around. The Mira, of course, also being available. Not always played on border, but certainly can be if you got the right tools and strats for it. And we'll see it, at least for now, both the Mirror and the Monty in the opening round. Things will start off in Armory and Archives bomb site for Liquid. Now to break some walls, reshape and restructure things around to their liking. Curious where the mirror does will go. It'll be an armor extension with CCTV control. What they'll do is that is that a bulletproof camera being slapped in the middle of the floor in armory by my Paolo? I believe it was. It's very interesting. In armory? Yeah, in armory in the middle of the floor somewhere. There's a bulletproof laying on the ground, right there. <laughs> Just looking at the ceiling. I mean, you can turn it now, so you can see both into archives. You can see yeah, in like towards armory, I suppose, but. That's a that's an interesting one at least. There we go. Fountain mirror to hold one side, one portion of the map. That's gonna be mirror to number one. And mirror to number two will be space towards 90 wall from break. So this is going to be an extended hole from Liquid, as you can expect. When you look at the mirror being played here, it's a very old school style of border from before the rework. You'd normally play a rook or a dock in that position with that zoom scope. You can get very comfortable with that long range of gunplay towards the Nigo East staircase where we saw the Romar Volps and Oryx playing around as well. And the analyst on the desk made a point about how you need to, you know, early on as a defender, deny the injury points on border. That's exactly right. And then you have that second layer. That's going to be your mirror windows and your Rooney gates in this case. And that third and final layer is going to be the bomb site itself. So while border is a relatively small map, it does have a lot of different steps to go through as an attacker. And with this new balcony leading towards break room, also more flanks for defenders to utilize in the round. Big value already from this Monty of Vita King as he walks in top of East. That's a long line of sights. And now another body in Nesk who has to peel off of this spot. Oh, sacrificing his own Black Mirror. We'll lose some of the wall. Lagonis, oh my. If it wasn't for that Claymore, that would have been another opening sweep from Team Liquid. They've been so good at getting these first picks and it has not slowed down whatsoever, Nick. No, it's not that they're doing anything spectacular to get them. It's a matter of when they choose to do it. They always have the right time to strike and they always come out either ahead on right or just ahead in terms of sheer trading, like two for one, for example. And again, they just find that small window of opportunity. And now, again, FaZe playing from behind to start things off. And Vitekick on the Monty is going to be that pillar operator for the attack that's going to help them move forward into the map. Of course, Volps on the Oryx is on the board, so Vitekick cannot walk too far off because of that Oryx operator. If he dashes into him, that's going to guarantee take him out. Vitekick still holding this position. Nesk needs to be very concerned with it. Volps is the perfect operator to deal with this, and he gets the diffuser as well, looking the wrong way! Wait a minute! 
Volps removing the heads of multiple players from FaZe Clan, leaving Souls to die at the hands of Palu. Team Liquid picking up exactly where they left off on Chalet. What a dominant round. And it comes down to, again, Liquid, they always have the right response. They always solve the problem in front of them. I mean, they were playing four versus three. They don't need to make a proactive play in that scenario. They had fountain control. The crossfires were still there for now. The wall had not yet been breached, and they had the bomb site itself. But again, they choose to go, you know what? We can deal with this. Volps gets active, runs forward past the enemy line, and they recognize the Monty is relatively alone. The dash on into him, knocks him back. The shield, of course, cannot block any of the bullets, and he dies. Claymore did, of course, find resets in the early stage of that round, but look at this. You walk too far forward with no gun behind you, and you are bound to fall as a Monty player. It feels like that Oryx's intended use in a lot of ways to be yeah. this quick-moving anti-shield operator is often forgotten because, well, that's just when you had the 1.5, not how you would use him most effectively. He was yeah. great for getting early long-range picks and then repositioning, making it so it was this never-ending treadmill of map control for the defenders, forcing the attackers to drone endlessly or waste time engaging in the one offside player. As I pointed out at the time, it's nice to see him used for his intended function. Second defense now goes to what used to be the second most common bomb site. It's fallen a little bit by the wayside. Vents and workshop. Yeah, all about how you play that dynamically. You've got one floor up on this top floor, and of course, again, Liquid will extend around and fortify locations with those mirror windows. But while doing that, they're still being proactive on the rest of the map, denying those initial entry points. So, base plan, they want to try and find an easy entry point. They go, they go east there, they go Chelo's window, but they're always met with someone swinging, someone applying pressure, making it hard for them. And it's Volps on one side, taking a bunch of damage, but he runs backwards. <laughs> Now you wish you had a dock. Liquid, they don't in this round at least, so Volks will have to play this with one HP left in the round. It's a rough early engagement for him. Puts him in a bad spot, but he's able to at least live for now. Three kills in that first round. A huge play in the final moments to win the round for his team. Keeping him alive should be high priority. Destruction going in upstairs, a cyber through the main lobby. A waiting room, it will be called lobby. Gives his position away, shooting away at that barricade. Very quick that we've seen FaZe be able to get in. And Nade might be able to secure resets. The first one down, FaZe Clan do indeed get very first pick. They've got a cheeky drone in sight. Lots of information on that A-bomb site. Intel is so important, so many soft walls, and of course, even the bathroom rotate as well. Nesk gonna be in a world of hurt, what a beautiful shot of the souls! It's not supposed to happen, but Nesk, of course, so great in these gunfight engagements. Cyber has been so secure in this spot, he'll link up with Vidiking. They know exactly where he is. There goes the default cam, there goes the Banshee. Palu guards above. The focus for FaZe Clan will be split onto both floors with a minute to go. Oh, Nesk oh. again? What did they feed Nesk today? Almost getting a third on the Cyber. Volps is still alive. That's what happens when you don't finish off the remainder of him. Nesk playing in this spot. Cyber goes down. Guess who it is? It's Nesk for three. Handy's the only one in FaZe Clan still upright. He'll have to deal oh. with the Jiggle Peaks inside of Customs. Lagonis has his attention and gets the final kill. Liquid already making quick work of FaZe Clan on FaZe's map. Sometimes all oh, find success in the early stage of these rounds. Even when they get the opening kill, they cannot convert it into any further lead, any bigger than that. By the King again, Amundi, he's gonna feel very safe because he can't get shot, but his teammates are gonna have the same struggles to get into this building as in previous rounds because, again, Liquid, they're in their face. Reese, it's now on the Vigil, for example. Volvus is on Thorn, so so much freedom from these players. You're gonna need creativity to win a championship. Cannot hold that against either of these teams. How many drones are going to get tossed into Reset's position that will know he's somewhere nearby, but not exactly where he is? These struggles on attack for FaZe Clan well documented all the way back in map number one. They have not changed whatsoever on map two. He said freedom for Volps on that operator. Roll! Oh, he's in trouble. And he gets the down. 
Are they able to secure, though? That is the question. Do they even have information? Lagonis trying to stop it from happening, but he can't get it done. FaZe Clan, superior on the entry. The Monty there as well to continue to push in. Nesk will be next in line. It's a glorified 5v3 favoring FaZe at the moment. Yeah, I don't think Volvus can be saved this time. Not like Chalet. Thing is, oh, Souls, he wins the gunfight, and so does Vatican on the injured member of Volvus, and has the back to Nesk and Paolo, that duo, the 2v5. There's a Monty on the board, though. That's yeah. the bigger problem. I don't know if this is a round where we can see it happen for them. There goes Palu. Nesk in a 1v5. Phase Clan looking for the first flawless round. Won't get it. Nesk gets a kill. Nesk is just something else today, isn't he? Two more picks. The Razor Bloom goes off to get a kill. It's a 1v2, and Nesk has intel on the plant. There's only one impediment. It's him versus the Monty. Can he get this done? Onto the diffuser he goes, you need to bait him out. Well. And he's done it! He'll up on the diffuser, but Vita King should be able to break it in time. Nesk in this standoff yet again, but he's forced the Monty in. Just needs to dance around him, doing damage in the process. Vita King versus Nesk. Oh my, this is tense all the while. The clock continues to run. Nesk a little perplexed by that one. The shield goes down. Nesk sticking it for now. Vidiking playing for time. Nesk only has a short period to get on it. And there's no stopping phase. It could have been one of the most impressive plays we've seen in this entire event. But Nesk just falls short. <laughs> phase Clan gets on the board. Yeah, and you can see from Nesk there, he knew that was possible. So now he's trying. I mean, he played it so well. The Asami barrier went down, blocks it for a bit, but the second one didn't activate it as he missed it on the door frame. There was a frost mat right next to the door as well. I was thinking for a second, maybe if Ness can kind of lure Vitakin into that match, that could be the round winning play. And he almost did it in the early stage of it, but it's so hard to play. There, there it is right there. Amunzi almost walks into it two times. But it's almost impossible, if not impossible, to beat a Monty 1v1 unless the person on the Monty operator makes a huge mistake. Keep that shield extended. And then as you saw, when Ness goes to defuse, you can kind of unextend, threat the ADS, threat the hipfire, threat that melee punch to take him out. And the time, of course, favoring the attackers, but that was almost a 1v5 clutch assisted by the Razor Plume of Thorn that came to play in that round. Volps might have been dead, but his utility's still doing good work. Would have loved to have seen that clutch get pulled off by Nesk. Not because I'm a Team Liquid fan, but simply because seeing those types of moments make these events all the better. Nesk was actually the first person ever to do a 1v5 clutch in Tier 1 level of play in seat, so he's done it before. Knows a thing or two about that. <laughs> I think it was, uh, it was a tweet that came during this tournament saying like, Volps was like 14 years old when Nesk like played in Pro League back in the day, and now they're in the same team. It goes to show just how long Nesk has been playing for, and how many different iterations of Siege and the meta and the Ross that he has survived throughout. And not just survived, he has been one of the top performers for his team, in his region, in the world, time and time again, at every turn of Siege, every stage of it. Still got it. Six to one so far here in Border in th the first three rounds. Of course, three of those six kills came in that 1v5 attempt that we just saw. It's a wonderful attempt by Nesk and a thrilling attempt at that. It's a bit slower now from FaZe Clan as they target those east stairs for the second round in a row. Yeah. Kiba barriers being the main thing to look at. Capkin traps as well that will slow them down. Good value from the Gemini of Cybers. Oh, Vita King gets caught. Volps is still in the same position. Liquid cleaning up, but FaZe Clan find two of their own very quickly to put it back to a 3v3. Yeah, I mean, this is a thing. All the attackers on one side of the map, they can guarantee the trades, but I would argue going from a 5v5 down to a 3 versus 3 kind of favors the defenders. They still got their runic gates, they still got the mirror windows, they still got the bomb side in their control. And the less attackers you have, either the less angles you can be attacking from, or you just don't have enough manpower to stack them together to go two into the same doorway for a trade. So I would argue Liquid comes ahead in this one. We see Nesk holding on, KDS, he eats a Capkin trap as well, so he's less than half HP now. Slowly bleeding away here is FaZe Clan. 
Uh, that's a late reinforcement on the fountain, but... It works. Well done for Liquid. That was their final reinforcement in pocket as well, almost as if it was saved specifically for that moment. Confronting those two mirror windows will be the big challenge for FaZe Clan now with 35 seconds remaining. They'll walk through office, KDS searching for something, and oh, he misses it! At Nesk makes him pay for that, punishing FaZe Clan. Handy next in line. Nesk unable to only get the one, no more than that. Now it's an aid, primed and ready towards main stairs. Lagonis dancing around it. He's got the Nitro Cell playing from below as Palu's farther back for insurance, oh. but he misses out on it. Suddenly it's Lagonis in a 1v2. There's the drop, Lagonis finishing one off. Handy needs to play on time, but Lagonis gets it done as the clock hits zero. There's something special about Team Liquid right now. They are making this look effortless. <laughs> They both go for the headshot play at the same time. Lagonis, he actually reads into it somehow, some way. It looked like he didn't know what was about to happen because he turned around towards that corner, had to start a small off his box, but it was the right play. He had a C4, could have gone for that instead, maybe make it a 1v1, but no. And with the last few bullets at his disposal, he makes the clutch happen. It was an upstairs bomb set hold, by the way, not a ventilation hold. So, Face Clan didn't necessarily have to drop, but then again, didn't have Diffuser necessarily. Both to go for the play together, guarantee that two versus one. No surprise, the players of Liquid are very happy about that one. I had the pleasure of talking to Sensei, the coaching staff or supportive staff of Liquid between map number one and map number two. And uh, I kind of just spoke to him about how Nesk has been so energetic and so vocal this event compared to previous because normally he's a funny guy, but in the server it's all, it's all business. And he kind of broke it down to me and he said that Nesk is the heart of the team. I mean, as mentioned earlier, you're playing with someone like Volt who's been watching Nesk since he was 14. Nesk is a literal legend and if he's going to be a quiet person on the team or sad or not being very reactive, not doing a whole lot of things, that impacts the rest of the team. Lagonis is a, is a great leader, a great strategist inside of Siege, but he's very timid, he's very shy, he's very quiet. So Nesk is trying to bring forward the energy and try and be like, guys, we got this. Celebrate the small moments, the big moments, etc. as well. And that seems to have been a big mental shift for Liquid as a whole because even when they're losing rounds they shouldn't, even when they are looking like they might not be, you know, looking amazing in a series, they actually look like mentally they're absolutely still in it. And we have seen Liquid in the past, when they fall in those semifinals, in the grand finals, they can get very much into their own heads. Hasn't been the case so far at this event. And against FaZe Clan, they really got things locked and loaded. Bit of a miss from Palu, who's now being watched. And he loses out on that duel. Palu is in such rough shape. And FaZe Clan showing some teeth. Oh my god. They've eliminated three players from Liquid in the span of five seconds. Bulbs is retaken from above, though. They don't know he's in this spot. Unfortunately, the small mag of the Roni is undoing. Leaves Lagonis with a minute and 40 seconds remaining as the final player from Liquid. <laughs> FaZe Clan at least keeping this close, at least keeping this interesting. Yeah, a very quick round. If Roni had more bullets, maybe he could have made it a two versus one for Lagonis here instead, but it's going to be up to the GOAT himself to get the 1v3 clutch instead. But there's so much time. You see FaZe, they're playing it beautifully. They haven't even dropped yet. They just lock him out of the bomb site. <laughs> Where do you go if you're Lagonis in that <laughs> you regard? Don't. You don't go anywhere. You go to the next round, and that's exactly what happens. FaZe Clan pick up their second round in this map. And by doing so, have bested their tally on Chalet, where they only got a single <laughs> round. I suppose they have, yeah. This is their map pick. This should... what, do you, what do you mean you suppose they have? I mean, I suppose... There's no, have. there's no, there's nothing to suppose. It's just objectively right. I mean, I was like, no, you're right. I mean, it was a 7-1. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you. You're always correct, even when you're wrong, Parker. Now, what went wrong with this upstairs hold, Nick? I honestly, I think Paolo needed help to put it very simple. I mean, he was very much far forward and nobody was able to support him. Face plan as well, using utility quite well. Smoke grenades and flashbangs to kind of separate that top floor hold. And then again, they isolate those individual members and they come out ahead in a man advantage. Normally when Faceplan go for these mini executes, it's them losing two members, only killing one from Liquid. So it's them playing, you know, three versus four. But when they come out ahead, when the mini execute works and they commit fully to the plan, that's when they succeed. I would almost 
go as far as to say his face need to believe in the same cause right now because they are playing more split up and more separated than that of Liquid. And those small moments is what can define these rounds, especially when you have Volps, Nesk always going really aggressive in the early beginnings of the round. Look at the kill ball right now. Reset, zero kills. Paolo, one kill. Nesk and Volps, they have eight each so far. If you shut them down as face clan, if you expect that aggression denied, that could be very defining. And look at this. You read into it. Goodbye, Palu. That's a good thing that you've got both Nesk and Volps carrying the weight. Palu's so used to being the top performer on Liquid. Maybe he's getting a little bit too cutesy in some of these engagements and getting punished for it by FaZe Clan. I mean, it's good. FaZe Clan, they play it slow. They recognize that usually Liquid will try and make a play. We'll wait for that play to happen. We'll get that opening kill, say, yep, thank you very much, and then play the round five versus four. And now Liquid, they're almost forced to make another play again because otherwise things could just kind of slip away. When you lose that early member, a lot of things that happens as well is that you lose a lot of time on the clock because you have less ground to cover as a defending team. You have less crossfires you can establish to shut down, for example, by on the Monty. So, Base Clan can make relatively quick work with this. They got office control, e stairs. They got almost all the things they truly want above. Bombsite is downstairs. That Taylor is bathroom bombsite. So, they still need to work the hatch, work the lobby portion of the map as well. But they also have half the round to go. Plenty of time, plenty of options. Liquid have to launch the strike at some point. Otherwise, surely they should slip away from them. Crucial final round for FaZe Clan as they look to tie things up with Liquid, allowing Liquid to take three rounds in the first half. Might not be the start that FaZe wanted, but if the numbers are to be believed, Border is the third most defender-sided map so far through this entire event. So the fact that Team Liquid Hasn't been able to close out this first half just yet. Obviously, it's not ideal. Diffuser going down, and it looks like Liquid know this. But do phase of the coverage? It sure seems like it. Lagonis can't get over in time. There's the Monty to pull up the shield. Liquid's only gotten a single kill, but they are in trouble because that shield operator will breathe down their neck. Well, Lagonis and Nesk might as well be miles apart. On the Diffuser, Nesk watching and perfectly executed by FaZe. We got ourselves a ball game. 3-3 three, three the first half. Yeah, and it's exactly what I mean. You have to fight for space somewhere on the map as a defender on this map of border. You can't give up everything for free because, as we saw, if the attackers, they get office control, archives control, they just gotta walk into a lobby, into the bomb set, or drop that bathroom hatch, and then they can start planting. And the Monty simplifies this process even more because you got that extended shield. You can just freely drop. You don't gotta do all the drone work and check every single corner. You can drop, get that diffuser down, he'll play the post plant, and do just that. Of course, that opening kill onto Paolo jumping out the archive's window. That's kind of how it begins. And in a similar fashion, Liquid, they can't help each other. Also how it ends. Talking about those stats of this being a defender-sided map. Would you believe it that only three bomb sites have been played on border? <laughs> I, <would. laughs> hmm. I wonder which one doesn't get played. Could it be the, uh, the customs bomb site by any chance? You would be correct. Good. Oh, that was a hard one. I mean, uh, it's the only bomb site yet to be played at this major, according to Fresh Jack, so far. And um, it's very believable. It just frankly doesn't get played by basically any team. It's a strategically a nightmare to play. There's no easy win conditions, and frankly, all the three of the bombsite is just outright better. Yeah, I mean, obviously, that bombsite was done a solid on Skyscraper. Bedroom and bathroom has been played a single time. Hey. Oh, Cyber gives his position away now in the run out. As we were only 20 seconds into the round, and these teams were itching for a fight through the entirety of FaZe Clan's attacks. And now we'll see if Team Liquid can maintain that same speed. Yes, that bedroom bathroom on Skyscraper was played a single time. That was the only other bomb site that hadn't been played here at the entire event, which honestly is great. It's great to see that these maps have bomb sites that are relatively balanced. Yeah. Teams can find strategies that are completely viable, irrespective of where they go. Volps walks in and decides to duel with souls. That's not a good idea. 
FaZe Clan far better on drawing first blood on border versus Chalet. Yeah, and look at that. Cyber is on dog like we spoke about with the death spawn or rather, but he gets shut down before healing souls, so those dog stims not finding any value in this one. There's another for Team Liquid as they're making up for lost time. Oh, what? Down goes KDS. What is happening right now? It's the Nesk show again and again and again. Souls reduced the limited HP from that first engagement. Now it's handy taking some damage, but nine kills as down goes Nesk. Silencing that raid boss for Liquid. Souls in a tough spot right now, defending archives. Mounting pressure from over on office side. That Flores drone going in, the Rotero. Be scouting for information, not looking for any gadgets. Because of the speed of this round, we've still got over a minute to go. Yeah. That's gonna feel the attackers because they got one more man alive, but also, as you said, those drones, the information to be gathered. Lagone is on Fink, it has two more adrenal searches to boost his teammates in those gunfights, and Handy and Souls don't have that dock available. They're gonna suffer more chip damage as the sound progresses. That damage over time could be a great flashbang. Punch the Q barrier and then make a play, Palu. You gotta go right now. Palu gets the attention of one, takes some damage before dropping on down. He's had a very poor performance, but the rest of his team, they're in their shots. Lagonis and resets on support. Get the job done on their very first attack. Liquid up 4-3 now. And that's despite losing the opening kill. Volps walked in, passport door. The crowd buff, the crowd support. It's not synchronized, though. <laughs> you expect perfection always, Parker, and nothing but perfection. There it is, yellow pink. Had the intel. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Ness doing so much work, but it might have got, got the better of him. Swing that army wall there really made things more difficult for Liquid than it had to be. And they went from a 4v2 into a 3v2. Had to take a step back, drone further not risk losing that round that they had, you know, done so well in. Sometimes all it needs in maps like Border is a single hero in an individual round to open things up because once you build that momentum, you get that kill like we saw and you kind of storm through the map because you have the drone intel, you can gain a lot extremely quickly. And I think that's a big difference between Liquid and FaZe. FaZe, when they get something, that's their line. That's exactly where they want to stop going. Whereas Liquid, they always build past what they what they want initially. Like we saw there, the information is on the dock of Cyber inside the security. But the second they get that kill, they don't stop at the line. They go past it. They want Fountain. They want Army Wall. They want Archives. And, and they just keep pushing forward because they set up so far ahead of themselves. When you have someone like Ness, they can just walk in behind that drone with confidence. That's how you can really quickly gain map control in these rounds. Yesterday we got to see in the G2 game, touched on it back in map number one, is that the depth of Liquid has never been as good as it is right now. Palu going one and four would usually be a storyline unto itself. Yeah. But it doesn't matter right now, because the rest of the team is able to pick up the pieces. That can be all the difference at this level. As for FaZe Clan, it has been a pretty bad day for Cyber. He is so off in the win condition for this team. Yeah. FaZe Clan, though, changing things up, trying to bring in more depth. They have Handy performing quite well. But outside of that, despite the scoreline, the rest of FaZe Clan haven't been that good, which is honestly goes to show you it's been a team oh. effort for FaZe. Oh, my! Two fast picks for Team Liquid and KDS getting droned out, could be next. Scrambling over towards Armory, and there he goes, spotted and finished off. This is ruthless aggression from Liquid with half of the round to go, I mean, and they'll get a fourth, a flawless round for Liquid done in 90 seconds. There, there are two different ty like, types of flawless rounds. There is the one where no one dies in one team and you kill all your opponents, whatever. But then there is a literal flawless where you do not show a single weakness or a single issue in your attacker defense. Liquid 
right there. That is a perfect round of siege. They had all the right angles covered at the right time by the right people, and they act accordingly. When one member gets a kill, someone else always holding the flank like we saw on the main stairs near the end, so there's no freedom allowed. When the last defender from phase wants to exit the side to go for Mesa's flank, we saw Nesk on Ace downstairs holding that double door as well. There's no breathing move of FaZe Clan. They're gonna call their tactical timeout, and you're right, Parker, about that point earlier about Paolo going one and four, that used to be a storyline. The desk spoke about it before the first map happened. Right now, in the current style of Siege, it's not good enough to have a player play at 200% this map, and everyone else plays 40%, and have that single member doing all the work, and then you swift every, uh, shift every now and again. You want those stable, everyone playing at 80 to 90%, maybe peak at 100% max capacity, because consistency is king in Siege. The, how close these rounds are, how small the details can be that makes the defining outcome be a win or a loss. You always want to just have stability, stability, stability. And from FaZe Clan, no one's playing it at 200%. I mean, Handy, yeah, 9 and 6, but I mean, Nesk is 12 and 5. <laughs> so, like, even he is not doing that incredible performance. And then, I guess, a pretty far fall. Vineking, sure he plays the Munty and whatnot, but even when he does that, outside of those two rounds on border, because he also played on Chalet, Faceland didn't play around the Munty very effectively. They didn't get those round victories. They did get two plans down, and Vineking did clutch that one versus one against Ness. That was a 1v5 to start things off. Face Clan needs more from each other as individual members on this five-man unit where they need to work better together because Liquid, they are doing just that. They have each other's back, they have the trust, and they got the timings nailed down perfectly. Timeout taken to either try to get the mentals in check or just revisit this strategy. Face Clan, mighty good at those first picks as we talked about. It didn't matter over the last two rounds at all as Liquid was able to get it, and then just continue to move forward. What was it, both rounds, two very fast picks. Yeah. Side for that. Souls focused on East Stairs, a drone thrown his way, now an E1D2, Palu down below. This will be a joint effort from Liquid as they also pressure from that staircase above. You saw that Souls actually get away. Palu could catch this if there's a drone in that proximity. Palu could find his second kill, and he does exactly that. The head of Soul subtracted from his body. Can't bring him back to life, even if there is a dock on the board. FaZe Clan surrendering that first pick yet again. Yeah, I mean, I, I think FaZe got to really be kicking himself a little, oh, yeah. Be sad about the fact that Valkyrie is gone from the table right now. They need Intel to work with. They're walking around thinking the map is clear, but it's not because, again, someone from Liquid is always there at the right location to catch someone on the rotate. They're always a step ahead on Chalet, on border. And these dry peaks from FaZe Clan almost are costing them their lives because someone is just holding an ankle. You see now with Palo again, almost found Vita King's head too. Trying to lure out these players from FaZe Clan, but Resets now has an idea of where that Legion is playing. No follow up at the moment. Liquid will juggle the Diffuser, allowing KDS to play up inside a fountain. Problem is, is you're about to lose that hatch from below. Now KDS taking some damage. Cyber firing back on Napalu, and Vita King good enough for a kill on a reset. So the advantage is now FaZe Clan's, a bit of sloppiness. The drone work from Liquid just not there. Nesk has information, but he's gone. He looks the wrong way. Vita King hiding behind the desk. Clutter in the way. That's why they tell you to clean your room, right? <laughs> Down goes KDS to Volps. Liquid trying to keep this close, but FaZe Clan holding the advantage of the final 30 seconds. Yeah, and really good showcasing from FaZe, actually swinging back and taking those confrontations because it can be hard to feel like you should be doing it when you lose them as often as they have. I do think KDS on the dock has kind of inspired them to take those risks because if it goes the wrong way, you can still get healed back up. It's a lot of sustain with that dock on the board, as you would put it. Now it's Lagona softened up. This round for Liquid is just about over. And it is! Volps and Vidiking on a collision course. Phase win their first round on defense. It couldn't come at a better time. Lose, and Liquid goes on to series point. That is quite the long barrel of a very dangerous gun. So FaZe Clan able to win that one.
But now they've got to tackle the other bomb sites as well. And that's where the prospect gets potentially a bit too tough. Yeah, things, of course, are going to change quite drastically on border, depending on what you are going to be defending. But again, the early catch, so great from Paolo. And then that's all Liquid really got done, because then it's Cyber striking back together with Vita King instead of office, and they find one apiece. And then they, instead of falling back all the way to the bomb site, they actually recognize they have such a strong hold inside of that office and fountain position, they just stick around. Because as long as they have that, they will have archives. And in the last members of phase, they play inside of Armory. They got the full bombs under control, and Liquid, they have to confront that eventually, or fall before that in the round. Bathroom Tellers now being attempted by FaZe. They're bringing out a couple of different operators, however. Both the Warden, the Oryx, and the Kaid, as well as a Pulse here. Corey speaking to playing below with that C4 Intel. So they got three C4s in pocket. This is going to be an explosive round, potentially. If Gideas can get the correct info and relate to his teammates, that could be some easy kills, but Again, Liquid, they must have seen the pulse peak in the prep phase because Nesk on the IQ for the first time, most likely to single-handedly play around the pulse play. A bit of a 1v1 standoff here with utility. First pick has been so crucial for these teams. It's a number that we focus on an awful lot, but usually provides you with a how fast a round is going to go, who can follow up, how quickly can you trade it out. I like this pulse pick a lot. I yeah. really, really do. Intel is something that it seems like FaZe Clan has struggled with a lot throughout this series. Reloading. Fully agree, and with the Valkyrie band, it only makes sense. I mean, it can be hard to play the Echo on this map. There's so much to cover. Pulse, sees to the floors, sees to the layers. It's a bit more simplified. Nesk hasn't really used the scanner a whole lot, hasn't had to because they're on relatively safe ground for now, but there it is. You can relay the info, the intel. They could, they are in a buff the side, however. Still gotta deal with office and archives, but they're very close to what they want up here. Okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Interesting hold. Soul sitting on Fountain with a Nitro Cell in hand. Two silhouettes from Liquid coming in, but he gets taken down before he can pop it. Liquid are just fast enough. They've got Fountain Control. The Nitro Cell will die with him. Where is the support, though? I mean, I, I guess FaceTime was expecting an Armory Archive attack from the opposite side of the map. And then, you know, Warden had that this Fountain position. The C4 is to do the work from below. But Liquid, the attack from Office, it doesn't have that same soft, destructible floor. So they completely circumvent this strat from FaZe. Olps is in an interesting position right now in Passport while the rest of the team goes to work on this Bathroom Teller's bomb site. Poking holes in the defense. Olps has now fallen off of that spot, so it was only for a moment that he held there. Cyber's retaken from above. Cyber's slowly coming online over the last few rounds, showing us exactly why he's been one of the best players in the world over the last couple of years. Seeing both Palu and Cyber at full force is quite the spectacle. We haven't gotten it so far today, but there's still time. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I might have spoken too soon about Palu, but hold on, Cyber as well. But he runs flat into Nesk. Team Liquid moved to match point, series point with a quick execute. One round away from securing their ticket to the grand finals is Liquid. Phenomenal round again, changing the pace, fast, slow, fast, slow. Liquid, a team that has come close so many times, but not quite lifted a trophy in a long time on the international grounds. And I feel like we've been saying this for a long time where every single tournament Liquid, they've peaked, you know, they're looking better and better and better. I think Liquid at Invitationals just in February looked like one of the best teams in the world, but they still didn't win it with G2 instead. And then you think, okay, you know, what happens now? Is Ness gonna step down? Do they make roster changes? And if they do, is that gonna work better? Like, where do they find the motivation? Well, they look even better now here. Copenhagen Major. Liquid has a positive win-loss ratio against FaZe on Border, Cafe, Oregon, Theme Park, and Villa. That's a lot of maps. <laughs> and to make things even worse, I mean, Border's being played right now. And if, if FaZe Clan win this, they go to Cafe, where Liquid also have that positive win rate against FaZe Clan. 
That's a tough one to break. Another fun fact, Face Clan and Liquid have never played Skyscraper against one another. It's always been banned out. However, by the, both of the teams, it's not always Face banning it, always Liquid. Both of them take their turns, like in this one as well. I believe it was Liquid banning Skyscraper this time. Now, when you're on match point, a couple of things come to play, just like in overtime. The pressure is there, and it can be hard for some players to feel like taking a risk is the right approach. Risk assessment, right? If you make a huge play that has a high risk, do you have the balls to do it? Because if it doesn't work out, it might cost your team the round. Flashman's going out, they're making the play. They're very quick in, but they can't get anything done. Nesk starts the killing, it's on Navita King. Resets goes down, they trade back and forth. This is a damn mess, and the diffuser is going down. What? You, they don't even seem to know it. Nesk still soldiering through the pain. Laguna spotted the last second. That's a bit of a miss from Nesk. Still taking prolonged damage from the goo mine. Needs to pull it out at some point. Now he's got the diffuser. Small reset. Nade goes in from Nesk. No hatch control whatsoever, so Nesk will have to do this himself. Nade goes in the wrong direction. Oh, nice shot from Nesk. And another! Are you kidding me, Nesk? Handy in a 1v2 as Liquid won a secure grand final. Yes! And it's Nesk to send his team to tomorrow's finals. That's incredible. I mean, <laughs> it didn't look like it was winnable. Nesk has played for so many years in so many versions of the game and he still got it. The biggest trophy on the biggest stage has eluded Liquid for so long. Whether it's been SI, whether it's been a major, they've won a single championship internationally, and you know that they are tired of losing. Nesk is tired of losing. Liquid tired of losing. They win El Clasico very quickly, and Nesk looks like the best player in the world again. 7-1 the scoreline on Chalet. It was a statement map. And then a 7-4 on border. Liquid were in the last major finals. They came up short against BDS. Who do they get? W7M or Sonics? Either way, they've got the rest of the day off and they look really, really good, Nick. Yeah, they do. And they have so much time to prepare now.